Hello students and welcome to this calculus lesson. In this video we're going to go over a velocity of a particle question where you're going to be allowed to use the calculator. And then we're going to be looking at a question that we might need to be looking at a graph. So let's get started. So in this first question here we're given the velocity of a particle and we're given a function for it. And um, that's going to be 0.5 e to the t times t minus 2 to the third power. So we know the position of the particle at t equals 1.5, but we want to find what is the position when t equals 3.5. So we did a problem like this. See if you can set it up the exact same way. All right, so I've set up the problem. Now it's about going through the problem um, using a calculator. Okay, so I need to figure out, all right, what is this value here? So that's what I'm gonna figure out in the calculator. I'm gonna put it in my function first and I'm gonna graph it. So I'm gonna use this graph to find the integral from 1.5 to 3.5. So I'm gonna go menu, analyze graph, and we're gonna go integral. And I'm gonna type in 1.5, enter, and 3.5, enter. Of course, I've already set up my calculator to give me these decimal points. If you haven't done that, make sure you do do that. And I'm gonna write that down, 15.919. Now I also know that p at 1.5 is 2.551 so i'm going to write down here so p of 3.5 minus 2.551 so i need to add that 2.551 to the left side and that's going to get me p at 3.5 which comes out to be 18.470 you'll you'll just uh, be able to add that up on your calculator real quick so we know what the position of the particle is exactly at t equals 3.5. Now we want to say, okay, what is the total distance that the object travels on the interval from 1 to 5? And so that's going to be where we're going to go from 1 to 5 of our velocity function, but we want the absolute value. So here's the difference from our last problem. In our last problem, we had to set to the equation equal to 0 because it was a no calculator problem to see where it was below above and below the x-axis. In this case, since it's a calculator question, we're just going to type it in with the absolute value. So 0.5e to the t, t minus 2 to the third dt. All right, so the first thing that I've got to do is I need to uh, edit my equation and I need to put this all in absolute value. All right, and so when I graph it, you can see how the graph changes to always be above the x-axis. And I'm just going to do what I did before. So 1 to 5, and I'm going to calculate this, analyze graph, integral, and I'm going to type in 1, enter, 5, enter, and we get our value here. And that is going to be 913.07. So this equals 913.07. And if I had units, I'd be able to tell you exactly if this were feet or meters. Now that I think about it actually is um, I'm not getting enough decimal places because I'm only going to 0 0.07. So I do need to edit this real quick. I'm going to go into my calculator, go into my menu, settings, and go an extra float point. And I can see that that comes out to 0 0.067. So 0 0.067. Just a little note that you always at least need to go to three decimal places. Four is going to always get you a better answer. All right, let's move on to our second question for this video. The graph of the velocity measured in feet per second, so see that we're given um, units in this one, is going to be given in this graph. We know the position at t equals 8, and we want to use this graph to answer some of these questions. So our first question is, what is the position of the particle at t equals 3? So if I'm doing this, I'm going um, v of t dt, and I'm going from, since I know the position at 8, I'm just going to go from 3 to 8. So I know that this is going to get me p of 8 minus p of 3. So I'm going to calculate from here, from 3 to 8. And I have a rectangle and a couple of triangles that I can use. So that's base of 1 and 5, so I'm going to get 5 plus uh, my triangle is going to be 1 half um, 2 times the height of that is also 5, so then those are going to be 5 plus 5, minus, since this is below the x-axis in this uh, region here, um, 1 half, the base is going to be 2, 
um, times the height of that, which is going to be two. So I get five plus five minus two, which gets me eight. And that's gonna be P of eight minus P of three. And since I know P of eight is 12, I'm gonna say equals 12 minus P of three. So I wanna figure out what P of three is. So P of three is going to be 12 minus eight, which means P of three is going to get me four. Just a little bit of algebra there. And I do want to say, since I know what units this is, that this is going to be um, velocity is measured in feet per second, so this is going to be four feet. Now let's move on to part B here, and it says, what is the acceleration when t equals five? So keep in mind acceleration, since I'm given velocity, I have to do a derivative, not an integral. So I'm gonna say here, a of five is equal to v prime of five. So let's look here at five. Well, that's on a line, so I just need to calculate the slope of that line. So the slope of this line, it is going negative because it's going down, so that's negative. And I'm going down the height of five, so negative five, and I'm moving over for slope of two. And so a of five, the acceleration at t equals five is negative five halves. But keep in mind that we do know units. So I'm going from the velocity is feet per second and acceleration squares that time. So I get feet per second squared. All right, here in part C, uh, we wanna say, okay, what is the net distance the particle travels from zero to 10? So net distance takes into account the final position from the starting position, which means that we are going to want this region here to be negative. We're going to subtract it. So as I write my integral from zero to 10 of V of T DT, because it's gonna get me the, uh, the distance traveled, I notice here that I have this region where um, region one, that's gonna be a triangle. Here, region two, that's gonna be a rectangle. And region three, that's another triangle. And then region four, uh, which I already labeled R, is gonna be another triangle. So let's go through those. So the first one is gonna be a base. So it's a triangle, so one half. The base is two, the height is five, plus that rectangle, so base of two, height of five. That third one, so that's gonna be one half. The base is two, height of five. And then that bottom triangle, we're subtracting it because it's below the x-axis. And we're going to get, um, it's a triangle, so one half. The base is four, height of two. Ran out a little bit of space there. All right, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna combine all these. That's gonna be five plus 10 plus five minus four. And I add all that up, that's 20 minus four, and that's going to get me 16. And we already know the units for this. The units for this is going to be 16 feet. That's how much change displacement that this particle has from its starting position. It started at a certain spot and now it's 16 feet away from that spot. And let's look at our final question. What is the total distance from zero to 10? So really I don't have to change too much, but that region now is going to be positive. The one below the x-axis, I don't care about it being below the x-axis now. Imagine it above the x-axis. And what I'm going to change here is this minus four. So um, I'm just gonna write out that we're finding the integral of the absolute value of V of T dt. And we already have done these calculations. It's gonna be five plus 10 plus five, but not minus four, it's gonna be plus four. So this comes out to be 24, and we do have units again, 24 feet. Hopefully you got all of these answers with me. Of course, we have another question coming up in our next video using a table, something that's going to be uh, a question that you're going to be asked on an AP calculus exam. I do encourage you to give it a shot before we get to it. Um, and of course, if you do need any help on these problems, please reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches.